how can buchu be taken? Is it do you have it in tea form? Sure. Um, you know, I mean. Buchu leaves, for instance, mm -hmm. when I was talking about the, the settlers actually using it, mm -hmm. the, um, at one stage they were exporting the leaves to the United States, etc., as a royal tea because they were only the wealthy could afford them. Yeah. And, um, but since then we've moved away. Uh, we now actually distill a very specific oil using the leaves, and you have to know how to distill it because a lot of companies actually try and distill, but they use very high heat and they burn the oil and it's right. useless, it loses all its property. So it has to be distilled in a particular manner, uh, which is the company's patent to the, the process. But now we can actually get them in capsule form. So if you go to your local health shop or your retail outlets, you can actually purchase capsules saying, I have a bladder infection, can I have the capsules containing buchu, which will clear my infection. So it's a lot easier to take than a capsule. I must admit that the taste is highly desirable. Uh, I don't particularly enjoy taking the tea, but a lot of people actually, you know, infuse the leaves yeah. and actually drink it. Um, the tea, the hot water, boiled hot water um, extract of the leaves causes your kidneys to flush, hence also very good for mm -hmm. infections of the bladder, etc. So there are different forms out there that one can access. I think in the Western Cape, in fact, in South Africa, there's always been spoken about the buchu brandy, where people for years, they used to take the leaves and, you know, soak mm -hmm. it in brandy and then drink the brandy. Whether that still maintains its properties, I'm, yeah. not too, I'm not too sure, to be quite frank. So if we go out and pick the leaves ourselves today and have it in tea, it will still have those medicinal properties, yes, but because the I mean oil and the pill form that are probably Exactly, more it's a lot more potent, mm -hmm. because the, the biggest problem is that you have to know which plants to, to, to actually harvest. As I said, they are different. Yeah. Um, secondly, by making a tea today, you're not going to necessarily extract everything that is good for you, so the easiest is use the oil. That's interesting that you say um, getting the buhu capsules will will eliminate a bladder infection. Yep. That's that's I think great when it comes to the antibiotic resistant um, when it comes to antibiotic resistance. Why aren't doctors recommending this more? Well, obviously it's, it still has to go through all the throes mm -hmm. of clinically tested, proven, mm -hmm. you know, under clinical trial conditions, and that's what the company is going through at the moment. They've really started looking at the anti-inflammatory properties in a particular study done with the Institute of um, Sports Science mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. We're now going to be doing a new trial looking at the early changes of osteoarthritic knee pain mm -hmm. in, in the elderly. So slowly as we identify the molecules, so it goes into clinical trials and hopefully one that will be a registered medicine. Wow. Now, so far, have we noticed any side effects with the food? No. Beauty is no side effect whatsoever. There is always the reticence for it to be prescribed or suggested for use by pregnant women or lactating women mm -hmm. or children. Not that there is anything wrong or dangerous or toxic, it's just that there are no studies specifically looking at pregnant women using the buchu oil in, you know, when they are pregnant. But there, so far, there's been no toxicity shown. And animal models done by the WHO as well have actually looked at the toxicity and there's no toxicity. Wow. Yeah. Now, when it comes to buchu, are we looking to have the name um, similar to that of champagne, patent to South Africa so no one else can use the name? I, I think so. I think yeah. so. I think the company is actually, you know, looking at a trade name for the actual mm -hmm. actives, um, but the buchu is the common name that we give it to, mm -hmm. uh, that we give to the plant. But the real name is Angus, Angostoma, yeah. so if we discover the antibiotic, it might be Angostomycin, you know, that type yeah. of thing, which will be quite, quite sexy. Now, are the descendants of the Khoisan involved in the marketing or production? Oh, yes, very of much so. Because they had the prior knowledge, and what's very good yeah. is the fact that um, the company went and actually signed a um, benefit sharing agreement with them okay. so that, in fact, part of the sales actually goes back to the trust and then gets distributed to the actual descendants of the, of the San people. And I think the company was one of the first in South Africa to actually undergo such an agreement. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. It's amazing. Now, yeah. how, how and when can we get our hands on buchu? Well, I'm sure you, if you go <laughs> out today into a retail outlet, you will find some, some buchu mm -hmm. capsules. Um, and otherwise, I'm sure the company can yeah. possibly let you, let you have some samples. Is it expensive? Not really. I mean, when you think about what it costs to treat, let's say, hypertension, mm -hmm. um, you know, it would more than likely be half the price. Yeah. Um, antibiotic, I mean, we know an antibiotic cause you have to take it for seven days might cost you 200, 300 rand. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, these are capsules which will only set you back about 100 rand. So it's very cheap, it's very readily ac um, accessible. Mm -hmm. And the beauty is that it's available to everybody out there. We don't particularly have to go to a doctor, get a prescription, you know, to actually get mm -hmm. the antibiotic.
Now, if anyone wants to find more information on Buhu, how, how can they do that? Look, I'm sure the best source of information would be on the website, the Cape Kingdom website. Um, so, I mean, if they just type in Buhu, Cape Kingdom, they will come mm -hmm. across a lot of information. What's, what's beautiful about it is that all the clinical trials, the studies that have been done, have actually been published and put on the mm -hmm. website so they can really inform themselves from a scientific point of view. Now tell me about the, the studies. What are you currently um, going through with, with people? Well, I guess you said it's, it hasn't actually reached we the have human. Done, oh, yeah, we, have, we, have okay. done, we have done. Um, we've done, obviously, the human trial was mm -hmm. looking at the anti-inflammatory property. It was done with the Institute of Sports Science, mm -hmm. where they were looking at the ability of a topical, in other words, a gel containing right. the oil, applied to the muscles of um, athletes um, to prevent tissue damage. Now, we know that when we are doing weightlifting, you bulge or you bulk because you're in fact damaging the muscle, which is painful. So there's always the mm -hmm. two-day delay in the actual onset of muscle soreness. And they actually looked at the ability of the gel to prevent that so that in fact you recover faster, but you still benefit from the exercise. The next study, which is now approved by the Medicines Control mm -hmm. Council, is osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, we also want now to take it further in a pre-diabetic in humans because based on the animal model, ex as explained, very clearly shows that there's benefit in the early changes of individuals showing insulin resistance, you know, glycemia, climbing. Stop it before you actually develop full-on diabetes. And so as we expand, so that goes into clinical studies and mm -hmm. we hope to, to be able to publish that. Now it seems like it has so many different uses. Is it a worry that we're going to run out of Buhu once the, the trials sure. are, are... Well, I, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, in the moment you're dealing with a natural source, mm -hmm. it always is a, is a worry. Is there enough out there for us to produce in, enough for the world? Okay. No, I think what's going to happen is that the moment we identify um, and chemically identify the actives, that it then goes into a synthetic process mm -hmm. like most drugs. You know, most yeah. drugs start with a natural source. The moment they know the structure, they can then actually get a chemist to make it in the laboratory for us. Professor, thank you very much Most for coming welcome, in and sharing. Thanks for the opportunity.